Hello Simmers and welcome to Scotland. We are in Dundee with the latest addition to the uh, virtual hangar being the uh, CamSim Chipmunk. A basic training airplane designed and first put into operation just after World War II in 1946. It was the first post-war project for uh, the Heffeland and it uh, served in many air forces including the british royal air force the royal canadian air force and the portuguese airport as a basic training uh, airplane it's a tandem one engine and especially in this uh, memorial flight uh, from the royal air force uh, livery i like this airplane a lot and camsim did an outstanding job in uh, replicating this thing uh, in the simulator as you can see. So what we're going to do is we'll just uh, take a, a, a quick look at the airplane. This is by no means a tutorial. The uh, add-on ships with a manual consisting of 22 pages, uh, 17 of which are uh, information concerning systems, how to operate the airplane, some checklists, etc. I glanced th uh, through them uh, quite shallow. I uh, haven't done an in-depth study of the manual yet, so uh, I probably do some things uh, other than they are uh, uh, stated in the manual. So don't get this as a uh, manual on how you should fly the airplane. It's just a first look, see what you get when you buy this one. I bought it last week in the uh, Memorial Day uh, sale at the uh, store.xplane.org and I've had a lot of fun with this airplane uh, since then so i uh, thought it was well worth uh, doing a video uh, on this one so let's just make a quick screenshot and then we'll just jump into the flight deck and when you load the airplane uh, you get this uh, efb style uh, menu that you can use to uh, alter some settings i'm just gonna fill the airplane with the fuel tanks completely full they are half full at first you can adjust some sounds set some reflections uh, if you like that or not when you're done with this you can either switch to avitab for uh, charts or uh, just a local map for the area that you're flying over and if you don't like the efb just press the uh, i here and that will remove it and if you want to uh, show it again just press here on this uh, yeah, this, this letter back on the side of the airframe to either show or hide the, uh, the EFP. Now, like I said, basic flight trainer that shows in the uh, instrumentation. Uh, it's all very, very basic. Uh, my father likes to call this honest technology. What you see is what you get. There are no computers. Everything is fully transparent, uh, etc. So the gauges, um, in a nutshell, engine RPM indicated airspeed, artificial horizon, vertical speed, oil pressure, oil temperature, turn indicator, direction indicator, altitude indicator, and just an ordinary analog clock. Um, here we have a transponder, and then there's the communication radio. Battery master avionic switch, magneto switches, um, some light switches, the generator and the pyto heat switch, the trim wheel, the parking brake, the red uh, handle down there is the throttle, the black one is the mixture control, fuel lever, your basic flight stick and the rudders. And with this handle you can uh, set the uh, flaps. And here's the carburetor uh, heater for either the cold or the hot position. And that's it. That's all you need. It's one engine, two seats, a fuselage just to hold the wings, the rudder and the uh, elevators and that's all you need for basic flying and that's why this airplane is very well equipped to be a, uh, a training airplane let's just bring some life to it switch the battery on uh, switch the nav lights and the strobe lights on open the fuel flow or the, the fuel i mean mixture is already set the throttle is closed switch the magnetos both on and press the starter. And here we are. The gyros are stabilizing. Let's first uh, dial up the uh, the heading director to the uh, magnetic uh, the magnetic compass. 
so that's two seven and a bit so now they are roughly aligned so now we can also use the uh, heading indicator um, to uh, navigate our way around so let's switch the transponder Oh, Avionics Master must be on first. Uh, transponder in the standby position. Switch the communication radio on. Let's take a look at the altitude indicator that is set correctly because the airfield elevation is 17 feet and that's roughly indicated, so this is good enough. Let's switch the generator on. Python heat and the taxi lights on. And let's get ourselves an ADIS for the, the wind information today. Echo, Gulf, Papa, November, airport information. Uniform, one, one, two, zero. Zulu, weather, wind, two, six, one, at four. Visibility, one, zero, thousand. Echo, Gulf. So two, six, one, at four. That means we have a slight, the wind coming in slightly from the left. So let's... Um, perform some checks let's switch the magnetos off one by one and check that the rpm doesn't drop more than 75 rpms that's correct for magneto one and also for magneto two so both magnetos on again and let's pull back on the stick fully Open the throttle to a ground run for 1800 RPM. So see that this needle hits the, hits the 1800. That's the start of the green line. And that's checked. So close the throttle lever. Right, let's release the brakes, perform a flight control check, so full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, that's also checked, and let's check the uh, up and down movement of the stick is also clear. So we'll taxi out to runway 27, that's just around the corner here, and then we'll uh, take off. Now the sounds that you hear are included with the add-on when you buy it. It's a lovely uh, F-Mod sound package. Some really nice engine sounds. We're just going to take off runway 27, perform a very basic flight uh, over the Dundee area and then come back in for a landing. And since we are now getting ready to take off, let's close the canopy. And you immediately hear that the sound uh, is affected by opening and closing the canopy. So let's just line up. And now for takeoff, I noticed that um, you should open your throttle or advance your throttle slowly. If you open it very uh, quickly, airplane has a tendency to make a very sharp uh, turn to the right, to starboard, so just gently open the power lever and the word gently uh, is applicable to most things in this airplane not only the throttle, also control inputs just be gently with this airplane so here we go and let's roll off, here we are. Now you can take off uh, with flaps, of course, uh, but the runway here is long enough to do it without them, so I didn't use them uh, on purpose. You can set flaps to half. Flap, has, uh, flap lever has three positions. That's up, half and down. Um, if you want to, you can go uh, with the uh, up position or with the half position, of course, if you're on a short runway, you might want to send them to, uh, to halfway down there. But uh, let's just fly to the left here. Climb in for left-hand turn out of Dundee.
Right, so the RPM is actually quite high. So let's start by um, leaning the mixture. And we are currently flying at 1200 feet. Let's just keep climbing slightly and apply some trim because I have to pull back on the stick quite a lot. We're now 2100 RPM, roughly, climbing at 75 knots. Perfect climb out speed for this airplane is 70 knots, between 65 and 70, but the manual recommends 70 knots also for some engine cooling purposes. And when you are in cruise flight, the manual states that you should be uh, uh, 2100 feet or slightly under that. Well, that's now almost perfect, and we just keep climbing slightly further. Let's just make another left-hand turn. Try to keep the airplane level. So, ease back on the throttle. And fly roughly zero, 090. Zero. So, nose has a tendency to be raised, so let's just gently push it down until the vertical speed indicator says we are at zero and then apply some trim down to uh, make sure that the airplane maintains this attitude when we let go of the controls which it now almost completely does so let's just ease back on the power slightly one half that at roughly 2000 rpms And here we are flying in the uh, Dundee uh, region. Now the big benefit of this being such a basic airplane is that it doesn't have complex systems, so the performance is excellent. I actually am capable of running uh, Orbex, True Earth, Great Britain North with the uh, Dundee scenery. Uh, with uh, 3D objects maxed out, and I still get 55 frames per second here. Well, of course, I'm now flying towards the sea, so that helps, but still a very, very good performance. So let's just... Uh, we're now in a slight descent, that's fine by me. Because we are now uh, roughly at 2000 feet. I just want to be slightly lower than that, so we're just going to cut back on the throttle slightly to keep a, a solid slight rate of descent. And in the meantime, let's make a right turn back to zero nine or zero. These are some offshore oil rigs ready to uh, be towed uh, towards the North Sea. So let's just make a left turn and take a closer look at those. So just bank the airplane. When you have the desired bank, neutralize the stick. Apply a little bit of left rudder and gently pull back on the yoke or on the stick to uh, try to maintain the rate of descent at uh, zero. Once again, gentle control inputs is what does the trick. So we're now heading north, which is basically a base leg, although we are a bit too high, so we'll just make a little turn over the city, take a look at the city, back to the uh, oil rigs, and then a right turn back uh, to final for runway uh, 27. See if we can land this airplane, which is actually uh, something that you have to get used to. Uh, 
um, of course it's a tail dragger. Personally, I noticed that I have a tendency uh, that upon landing I flare a bit too early and float too long. And sometimes uh, yeah, it's just quite difficult to uh, aim your flare, the, the point where you start your flare correctly. If you wait too long, you, of course you smash it to the ground, but if you do it too early, you uh, you float way too long. So I'm quite anxious, uh, quite curious to see how this will go uh, on this attempt. Fat rate of descent upon touchdown uh, varying between 50 frames uh, uh, feet per minute. Of course that's a butter landing, but I also had uh, 350 uh, feet per minute, which is of course a hard landing and most of the values in between so let's say 180, 200, 250, 300 feet per minute I've seen them all but there's not a solid line in those uh, just yet so despite the fact that it's a simple airplane oh let's just switch the transponder on <laughs> uh, it's, it's still some if, if you're used to um, flying airplanes with a, a tricycle undercarriage, meaning a nose gear and two main uh, gears, then flying a tail dragger is uh, something completely different. That takes some uh, getting used to, but that's also part of the fun. So let's turn left. We just maintain a stable descent. position us on a correct altitude for our uh, approach uh, in a few minutes. Of course the uh, Orbex scenery is always breathtaking. I did some massive uh, shopping in the uh, Memorial Day sale and uh, Orbex had a lot of the True Earth uh, packages on sale. So. Uh, I already had Northern uh, and Southern California, but I now also bought Oregon and Washington State and also the Florida package, all in the SD uh, version. And well, they just enhanced the sim so much. It's uh, Those packages are really, really worth the money. And then, uh, of course, I saw that this uh, chipmunk was at half price in the Memorial Day sale. And I already looked at it a couple of times. So I thought, well, if I keep going back to looking at it, I might just as well buy it now it's at half price and I didn't regret it for a second because it's just a lovely, lovely airplane to uh, fly around in your sim. Be gentle and it will be gentle with you. Let's fly towards those oil rigs down there. That's a nice point for visual navigation. So here we are. Slightly under 2000 RPMs, straight and level flights at 85, somewhere between 85 and 90 knots. That's textbook for this airplane in terms of a cruise. But of course we are going in for a landing, so what we'll do is we'll just uh, turn right over those uh, oil rigs. We are now at 900 feet, so let's just... Yeah, let's uh, initiate our base leg, so let's turn left, heading 180, or uh, right, heading 180. When you are in the turn, focus on the heading indicator. The magnetic compass is affected by roll, yaw, pitch, uh, acceleration, deceleration, etc. So the turn indicator is a much more reliable instrument to uh, see your present heading when you are in a turn. That's why it's called the turn indicator. So let's uh, set the mixture full rich, turning for final. Close the throttle and 
descent not too quickly. We also want to lose speeds. Let's go for roughly uh, 70 knots. Keep pulling on the stick, so let's just apply some nose up trim. Alright, flaps half. Now, when you engage the flaps, the uh, nose of the airplane will start to drop, so you have to compensate for that with some uh, control stick and trim inputs. And let's open the throttle. A little bit of engine power will keep us uh, in the air a little bit smoother. Alright, so we are now roughly slightly over 60. Let's set full flaps. Very, very mild wind, so there's no... Uh, just a very slight crosswind. Let's just apply a little bit of left rudder. Two benefits, the airplane is nice in the wind and we have some view on the runway. And here we go for our landing. And another butter landing, but with a slight bump. So pull back on the yoke. Gently apply brakes. If you brake very aggressively because it's a tail dragger and the brakes are in the main wheels. Uh, yeah, if you brake too aggressively, the uh, airplane will just uh, tip over its wheels and uh, be nose down into the ground. So we don't want that to happen. Let's open the canopy for taxiing and listen and enjoy that sound. I love this this engine sound when it's just on idle. That nice friendly bloop, 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 bloop. and listen to that for quite a long time. Transponder back to standby. Let's just uh, raise the flaps. And taxi back to our original position. And that will then uh, almost conclude the video because once we are in position, I will just do a replay of the landing. In the meantime, until we get there, I'll try to keep my mouth uh, shut most of the time to just enjoy the uh, fabulous engine sounds with this air with this add-on.
Anyway, here we are. Let's set the parking brake, take a quick look at the uh, landing from the outside. Slight bounce, but other than that, uh, I'm actually quite pleased with this landing. So let's just shut down the airplane. Let's switch the transponder off, the nav or the communication radios off. Pyto heat can be switched off, as well as the strobe lights, the navigation or the taxi lights. The generator can be switched off, avionics master, the magnetos, close the fuel pump, and uh, navigation lights switched off, battery is off, and here we are. So, to be short in my summarization, this add-on is well worth the money, I recommend it wholeheartedly, it's a very fun uh, add-on. Um, if you're new to flight simming, this is a perfect add-on to start your your flight training, just as many real-world military pilots have started their training on this uh, this type. It's a forgiving airplane, uh, just be gentle with it. Small control inputs are key. Uh, the sound set is beautiful, the 3D modeling is beautiful, both on the outside and the inside. It's... Um, a high performance add-on because it's a basic airplane with no complicated systems the uh, performance is excellent and it's just a lot of fun to fly this thing and i think that if you're using uh, uh, either vr or track ir uh, because of the glass canopy all around you you have very good uh, visibility a very clear field of view all around you from this airplane so my guess is if you're using VR, that this will be a really immersive uh, flight experience with this uh, airplane. Um, having said all that, recommended by me wholeheartedly, and that's the end of this video. Hope you liked it. If you have any tips, tricks, comments, questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comment section below. As usual, please do so in a respectful manner. And uh, I hope to see you all again another day on another video. And until that time, please stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.